It is Sunday afternoon, and I've arrived home from church. We took a look at the sound system to find out what the problem was with there being no video. And full confession, I'm the reason why there is no video. I forgot to plug something in. My apologies to everyone at home. Hopefully I can make it up to you by live streaming just the uh, sermon section of today's service. I know that you, you missed hearing the hymn sing uh, and also the, uh, the solo, uh, the instrumental solo that Andy did. This is the best that we can do, and I hope that uh, this will work uh, to replace that. So I invite you to listen now for the Word of God within these words of Scripture. A reading from Luke 3, uh, chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, and where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child uh, leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a satire news site called Bumblebee. And a few years back, they posted this, I hope you'll find, humorous uh, satire piece looking at the the well-known song, Mary Did You Know? You hear it every season at Christmas. I'm not going to sing it for you, but I'm sure that you can hear it in your head already. And the satire was that whoever, I should back up, the satire was that some denomination uh, in the U.S. was going to remove Mary Did You Know from their Christmas playlist of songs to do during karaoke, because the song was obviously a man mansplaining to Mary about her pregnancy, telling her, well, Mary, did you know that this is going to happen? Did you know that Jesus in your womb is going to accomplish this? When you take a look at the lyrics to the chorus, here you see what sounds like mansplaining. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Did you know? The chorus goes on from there. If you don't know what mansplaining is, I'll try my best to explain it to you without being guilty of mansplaining myself. Mansplaining is when a man tries to explain to a woman her experience rather than listening to what her experience is, where the man takes some posture of superiority and from what he perceives to be his wealth of knowledge explains to the woman something she already knows, dismissing her knowledge and dismissing her experience. Uh, checking on the web, I could find a number of examples about mansplaining, complaints from women that men were trying to tell them that they knew more about, for example, the feeling of being pre uh, pregnant than what the woman knew. This is my favorite one that I found online. Uh, it has, and let me make it larger for you, uh, it has a woman saying, here is a mansplaining experience I had. I once had a man mansplain to me how to pronounce my name. Uh, something as intimate as that, uh, as though that is what uh, I need someone to explain to me. It's like there's a gatekeeper. The problem with mansplaining is something between you and your experience and says, you have to go through me in order to experience your own life. That's why it's annoying. Annoying. We don't need somebody to do that to us. But, but pause for a moment and consider that when it comes to experiencing life, we often have people who believe that we have to go through them in order to access this world of ours. Maybe you're a, you're a student at school, and there's a, a bully 
who stands between you and learning in school because you're always worried about what the bully is going to do. Maybe at work you have a boss, the kind of boss who just won't allow you to be happy in what you do, that you have to go through them in order to experience any kind of meaning in your job. Or maybe you're an experience of violence where there's someone who, because of their violence, limits you from being able to experience happiness. Those are more than just mansplaining. Those are pretty serious examples of someone believing that they are what mediates your life. You have to somehow live through them, give an accounting through them. The scripture passage that we read this morning, it presents this alternative to this gatekeeping. Mary has just heard from the angel Gabriel that she's pregnant with the Christ child, and she's heard that her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant also, and so she heads to visit her cousin. It reads, in those days, Mary set out and went with a haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Did you catch that part? She's going to visit Elizabeth, but the story says went into the house of Zechariah. Like it is so often in our lives, there's just someone who stands in the way, some person, some system, some power that we have to go through to access even the relationships that we want to access. The passage goes on to say, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Did you catch what happened there? When the two of them were alone in this space, without anyone else, without men, without society there, without all of the worries that I'm sure Mary had when she left her hometown to visit her cousin, all of those worries all of that vigilance, those gatekeeping from others was no longer present when it was just the two of them. And in that safe space, God was able to communicate directly. The child in her and the child in her cousin immediately connected by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the first thing that Jesus does in this gospel account. In utero, Jesus demonstrates what power of liberation God is offering in Christ. No longer will someone else mediate between me and you. We're in what's called the Reformed tradition. And without going into a history lesson, one of the foundational beliefs that we have in the Reformed tradition is that there is not another human being, no, no priest, no pastor, no religion that mediates between us and God. Because in Jesus Christ, God has come and God is with us and is as intimate to us as a mother and who is with child. We, we talk about God being in our hearts. There's this immediacy of God's presence that doesn't require someone else to gatekeep it or even mansplain it to us. Elizabeth was filled immediately with the Holy Spirit. God spoke directly with her and let her know what was going on. And she exclaimed with a loud voice, Blessed are you among women. She knew immediately what was happening. She became a prophet. Now, before we get to this part in the Bible story in Luke's Gospel, we have a few other examples of mansplaining going on, somebody gatekeeping. Earlier on in the story, we have the story of Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, who's gone into the temple, into the Holy of Holies, into the altar, where he encounters this angel unexpectedly, and he's dumbfounded. He doesn't know what to make of it. It says, Zechariah saw the angel. He was terrified. Fear overwhelmed him. And he said, how can this happen? Or how will I know that this will happen? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. That was his response to the angel communicating what God wanted Zechariah to know. And humorously, we get a little bit of mansplaining going on. The angel says, well, how will you know? 
I'm Gabriel. I'll explain it to you. I stand in the presence of God. I've been spent I've been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. See, that's how it was. The the news of God's grace always had to be mediated through someone, an angel, a prophet. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is that in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have God in our hearts, and no religion, no person is going to mediate that for us. The same thing is happening in the Annunciation story. Mary is visited by this angel who says, I'm here to tell you something. You are with child. You are going to give birth to the Christ child. And Mary's reaction was, it says in the scripture passage, but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this must be. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And humorously, we have, we'll call a little bit of mansplaining going on. The angel said to her, well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. We're still having others explain to us what God is up to. But then we get Mary and Elizabeth together in the same space, and the Christ child there, who through the Holy Spirit, lets us know within our hearts, within us, God's presence. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she said, For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. She knew what was going on. It didn't need to be mediated by someone else. This is the good news of the gospel. This is what Emmanuel means. We, we hear this name, Emmanuel, God with us, in the Christmas season, and we sometimes don't stop to think about it. But it means that God's in our hearts. God's as close to us as mother with child. And that is liberating. We're freed from the, the gatekeeper, the person who wants to mediate our experience with God, the person who wants to stand between us and God and say, you will not pass. If, if you're the, the student with the bully standing between you and education, the gospel, the good news in Jesus Christ is that at the end of the day, no matter what that bully does, the bully cannot come between you and God's grace. If you're the person at work and you got the, the horrible boss who just wants to make your job miserable, you can't have any satisfaction except that boss allows it. The good news of the gospel is even that person who has control over your paycheck cannot stand between you and God's grace. There is no one who can be the gatekeeper because in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we connect automatically. Or maybe you're the person who's suffering violence in a relationship. The good news of the gospel is that violence in as much as it can take away your physical, your psychological happiness, can impact your mental health, the good news of the gospel reminds us of this. That person cannot stand between you and your relationship with God. God's love and God's grace for you cannot be undermined by the evil in this world. So, when we think about Mary... We don't need to be a gatekeeper. We don't need to mansplain to Mary what this Christ child is about. She knows. She knows by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as soon as Elizabeth is done being filled with joy and saying, Blessed are you, Mary becomes a prophet and says, This is what's going on. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, she knows. For God has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Mary knows what's going on immediately within her. She says, surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done real things for me, great things for me. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent them away empty, the rich away empty. 
she knows what this Christ child means. God has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Mary knows what's going on with this gift, with her role as the mother of God. In remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. We don't have to ask Mary, did you know? Mary doesn't need a mediator because in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have connection with God's grace. Here's how the story ends. After Mary, it says, Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. She didn't rush back home to where all those gatekeepers were. She stayed for three months with Elizabeth. Can you blame her? God bless you in this week to come. Let you know that our Christmas Eve service is 7 p.m. It's candlelight and communion, and it's kid-friendly, 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day falls on a Sunday this year. There is no service at Strathroy United Church on Christmas Day, but we are gathering on New Year's Day, which is a Sunday, in the Golden Jubilee Room for a potluck gathering for uh, an informal time of uh, hymn singing and getting together. And we'll live stream that uh, at 10 a.m. briefly so you at home can uh, be, connect with us on New Year's Day. God bless you and we'll hope to see you soon. Thanks for your patience as we work through our technical difficulties.